We live today right here on Street Hype. This time, family, we out here with the birds and the trees and everything. We got something different for the next three days, though. We got an author in town. We got a new book right here. It's called Who's Pippin' Who, family. If you've been watching this show, you know what I'm saying? You might see some commercial. Now I'm getting ready to interview. We're going to follow him around for like three days. Let me go ahead and introduce him and see what he got How going. you doing today, family? I'm good. I'm good. What's happening, brother? It's all good, man. Yo, everybody on the street going to first know who you are, fam. Let's introduce yourself. All right. My name is Charles R. Rose III, right. better known as Chuck. Back in the day, most folks knew me as Chucky. Okay. Uh, Amherst County native. Uh, we're in Madison Heights. As Brent said, we out here with the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees in the country. I'm a country boy. That's just good. So we bring it on our own back. Coming in from Orlando, right. Florida. Yeah, that's good. You're coming in from Florida, showing some love for the next three or four days, correct? Now, you got this new book called uh, Who's Pippin' Who, family? That's it. Now, you're teaching the pimps about... Now, I got my little checker. I ain't get all the way through it yet, but before this show is over, we're going to go through this whole book. I'm about halfway through it. Like you, uh, But um, you got this book here called Who's Pimping Who. Tell us a little bit more about it. Teaching us the pimp game. Teaching the pimp game is actually the positive side of pimping. Right. Most people look at the, uh, the uh, title, and it's rhetorical. It's a statement and a question. Right. So it makes people think, and hopefully that the, uh, the title is so inviting, it makes the reader want to in investigate the contents of the book. A lot of people have been uh, taken back by the title itself. When I talk to literary agents right now, they're kind of pushing back because they see the word pimp. Mm. But the thing of it is, when you think about how it's used in the, in the book, it's uh, personally improving my principles. So it takes that negative connotation out of the book and put a positive spin on it. Mm. There's five principles in the book. Personally improving uh, my mental performance, personally improving my paradigm or perception, personally improving my presence, personally improving my proactivity and position, and fifth, uh, personally improving my prayer, which is a spiritual component of the uh, of the series you know, of principles. I got up to principle you know, number two, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm still going through it. And um, I, I was looking at uh, some things from, like on page four and five when he came in, he was talking about... Uh, I, it was altitude uh, uh, determines altitude. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, your attitude determines, determines altitude. altitude. You know what I mean? And, and them principles there about. And then you had another section in there where he was talking about uh, the four things. Uh, what was it again? Uh, the four endowments. The four endowments. Yeah. When you wake up in the morning and everything, and, and uh, re revitalize your own self. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Your own pimp game. There you go. So, um, and I know a lot of the word twisted because it's, it's a street terminology. Right. And we got to understand, that's why I got cultural awareness, because uh, we, we speak different dialects as part of, of culture, you know what I'm saying, of relating words. Right. Now, you saying here, you doing it in a positive sense, and even on the streets, we use it in a positive yeah, I mean, sense. I think, no it, doubt. I mean, well, I think that you, uh, you look at uh, the word pimp and uh, right. the, the traditional word of pimp, right. it, it, you know you know what that means. I mean, it's a person, and in, in, in the book, I talk about it being a person that controls cir circumstances, situations, basically others. Right. Uh, it's a person that's in control of their destiny. When you think about the uh, other side of the uh, the coin, the person that's on the uh, other side of the pimp is obviously the prostitute. Right. So that person is being dictated and they have no control over their uh, over their destiny or their future. So when I think about the How's word used pimp over the course How's of the last couple of years, it's seen a renaissance of sorts. I mean, it's it's, it's less uh, less negative. I mean, we pimp right. our rides, we right. pimp our outfits. Right. So it's kind of got a positive uh, connotation. You hear you now you hear senators and governors and and even Ronald McDonald on a commercial talking about pimp and Burger King is now breakdancing on a commercial. Right. So you're saying uh, it's really seen a renaissance of sorts. But when I talk about the game of life or the quality of life, mm. I, I talk about either you a pimp. Mm -hmm. Or you're a prostitute in the game of life, meaning you're either the victim of, of circumstances being others, mm -hmm. uh, or either you're in control of your future and your destiny. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly where, uh, the, 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 for all intents and purposes in my book, PIMP right. is uh, that acronym stands for PIMP. One of the things, you know, now, you, you're a native from VA, as we can see. Right. But one important thing, you mentioned the word quality of life. Right. If you look out here and we listen to these birds tweet, fam, this is life. This right is here. life, brother. You want, you want to explore us a little bit? Yeah. You kind of tell us what's going on out here and you know what type of life you kind of had when you well, grew up out here in these type of situations. Ain't the concrete. No, you know it's not I mean? the concrete you jungle, man. Not the concrete <laughs> jungle. I mean, a lot of folks, uh, right. you know, it, it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. Right. And I, I learned that throughout my college, my college life. You know, we'd have brothers coming in from, you know, from this, you know, Brooklyn, Jersey, New York, and even when we go to the basketball court, so we, they'd end up getting spanked by the Virginia boys. Right, you know right, I mean? right, right, right. But you know, because we had to let them know it's not from, it's not where you're from, it's where you at. Right. Uh, and to your point and to answer your question, man, this is Madison Heights, man. So, um, you know, I've had right. the opportunity to live in Blacksburg, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, right. uh, most recently and now currently in Orlando, Florida, right. which is okay. a beautiful state. 
And one of the things that I want to make sure when I when I talk to people about quality of life, you said it, uh, Mr. B. It's 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 not about material things. Right. It, it's by it's your definition uh, mm -hmm. of how, how you want to live your quality of life. The only thing that I find uh, about uh, from the difference between high achievers and what I would call low achievers right. in the game of life is that they experience next level. Uh, experiences mm. so people kind of hinder themselves if, if, if you will in my opinion so right. they really don't know what quality of life they really want to aspire to right because how can a person enjoy or appreciate the beach if they've never been right you see what I'm saying so if you expose yourself to a next level experience then you might develop an appetite mm -hmm. for a higher yeah, quality of life the awareness yeah, part of culture awareness there you go you got to first identify who you are right and what you are and what like you saying what you want to achieve in life exactly I feel you on that family mm. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, I think uh, you know the country. Like I said, we used to live. Uh, I used to live off of Right Shop Road. Uh, this is the second residence that my parents have uh, okay. just relocated to. Not even eleven, ten miles from where I was born and raised. Right. But again, it's still in Madison Heights. It's the country. Right. Uh, you know, I think about. Um, you know my travels and, and the places I've been able to experience over my career, and that's one of the things that I talk about when I'm. Mm. Uh, quality of life is, is that I've ha had, had to uh, opportunity to enjoy experiences, interactions with uh, with the wealthy and affluent, right? Uh, the impoverished, uh, very very brilliant folk, uh, people that may not have achieved at the highest academic le level, but you know what? I learned from every single one of them, every single, and it made me yeah, smarter. That in your book, you was yeah, talking about that that um, everybody you don't care how rich or poor they are, they still had some type of hangups, they still had problems, they right. still. You know, but they, but the difference is, you just saying in your book that they get up with the game face. Oh, you hit it. They like, yo, 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 let's do this this morning. Yes, you know what it. I mean? Forget what happened last night. Let's get a grind. Let's get our grind on today. Let's get our grind on today. It, 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 it breaks down to those individuals and man. What I'm talking when I lecture to the young folk, uh, they they they're playing the game of life, or either mm. they they want to give the game to somebody else. They say, man, it's the white man's game. It's the blue man's game. Right. It's the green man's game. It's the game. The game has no ethnicity you know or I mean? gender, and, and, you know and when I, mean? I talk about, and to your point, Mr. B, what, what they talk, what I talk about in the book is that they have their same vices. I've been able to spend time with these people that claim to own the game or it's their game, doing right. halftime, if you will, or or, or or after the game of of the work day, right? You know, transpires, right? And I find that they have the same vices, hang-ups, right. uh, issues, right. but you, to your point, they wake up and you'll never know it. Yesterday really did end last night. Today is a new beginning. Right. You know what I mean? So they actually wake up with their game face on, mm -hmm. play the game to win. It could be in the workplace. It could be in the academic place. It could be uh, in, in one of the endowments of the physical being, mm -hmm. in the gym. Right. But when they get back into they, to their their own altar and, and their family or wherever they want to be, right. that's where they you know expose themselves to, their, to their most, uh, the people that's most close to them. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so that's the thing. I just wanted to let the young folks know that don't 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 get it twisted. Right. Contrary to popular belief, the people that look like they got it going on, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But they, they don't put their game face on, you know I mean? and they're high achievers because of that. They know how to operate. They yeah, I, mean, I know. Like being in the entertainment business, I, I see people like before the album really blow up. Right. But you see them so much on BET and different places. You think these cats are paid. Right. And so forth and so on. And they come to find out they got to push like you know uh, five hundred thousand units go gold at least. Just to break enough chains to pay their bills for the month. Come on now. And um, you know, they, they when they on the on the videos, they floss into somebody else's stuff a lot of times. A lot not of everybody. Times. A lot of times. You know what I'm saying? And um that's that's the thing that a lot of people don't uh what was it? Fake it until you make it. Fake it until you make it. That's see that's the, the thing. And you know what? That that did not make the book. It might it might make volume two pimping ain't easy because right, this right. is a, a series of pimp uh, chronicles. It, that's pretty much the concept. That's the theories and that's that's the that's the the, the, the thinking that I want these young folks to, to, to get into is fake it until you make it. Yeah, they lease a lot of that stuff. You know, I talk about in the book about sec, uh, next level experiences. I talk about going into a mayor's and putting on a Submariner or, or a Roly, if you right. will, uh, or going to the nicest and most fluent developments and walking through and, and smell the air in that in that area, you know? Right. And, and just, and, and that, that will aspire you to or motivate you to say, hey, you know what? If they can do it, I can do it. Right. You know? So uh, it's definitely a, a constant it's a you know, from my experiences, you know, personally saying that uh, it's like you said in your book too. Uh, it's all in what you think. Yeah. I think you had a a, a, a couple of uh, pages on that about how you're thinking. Uh, you saying that your employees. Yes. Uh, 
you, you, you showing them a way that y'all can make bigger money. Y'all was yeah. doing something that no other company was doing. Right. This is an opportunity for us. Right. But yet, because of their attitude, they waking up. Yeah. 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 Mm. And a lot of relationships happen like that, a too. Marriages, people Marriage. waking up. Uh, instead of saying, okay, that was yesterday. What can we do today to make this thing better? Totally, man. It, it is truly... Attitude definitely determines your altitude. Right. Back to that point. 